Me, me, me. I wonder if I'm going to leave that bit in. <laughs> Did I leave that bit in? <laughs> Hello, it's uh, Paul and Caroline here. So this is the Caroline uh, that may be the voice of someone you've heard before. Or <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe that's a mystery for another day. Uh, for those of you that don't know the history of my channel, um, it actually started out something like 15 years ago when I was a gem faceter and I used to facet gemstones. Um, I've sadly actually deleted all of those videos. They don't exist anymore. But um, for those of you that are wondering, I did use to facet gemstones many, many years ago. After that, my channel started to become a car maintenance video. And I mainly, I initially was doing Toyota Corollas and then later on I was doing Mazda 3s. And before my cancer situation took off, I got up to about seven to 800 subscribers. And then when I got cancer, um, my numbers jumped rapidly. So I'm now very aware that the vast majority of you are here because of um, my experience with cancer, rather than um, any connection with gem faceting or um, Toyota Corollas or Mazda 3s. And yet I still feel the need to talk about um, mechanical principles because I I think inherently one of my characteristics is that I do love teaching I do love um, passing on my knowledge to other people and um, and now that I know that my time is short I um I feel more of an urge to um, to document that knowledge but because I know that a lot of you are here because of the cancer journey and you actually don't you actually a lot of you most of you aren't mechanics so you don't come from a mechanical background what I'm gonna do with the mechanical videos is I'm gonna back them right off. And I'm gonna talk about more universal mechanical principles rather than the specifics of the Toyota Corolla or the Mazda 3. And what Caroline and I are gonna to do today is we're gonna talk about seat belts. And I wanna show you how amazing these products actually are and how simple they actually are in their amazingness. And, um, yeah, Caroline and I are gonna are gonna do that together with you, and this is pretty much how my mechanical videos are going to evolve. I'm going to go more to the basis of 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 mechanical engineering. So, all right, Caroline. Hi. By the way, we haven't we haven't <laughs> uh, scripted this at all. We are this is purely ad lib. Um, so I don't know whether to talk to you or talk to camera. Um, just wing it. All right, we're just gonna wing it. So what I want to do to start with is I need to explain to you what a ratchet is. And maybe if you want to make any comments on the side mm -hmm. along the way, if you yeah. think if I'm missing something. Okay, so what I've got here, that's a standard 14 mil nut. And I've got here a standard 14 mil spanner. And when I put the spanner on the nut, I can turn the spanner in either direction. And when I turn it that way, the nut moves in the same direction. Now, if you compare a standard spanner with a ratchet spanner, so I'll put those up against the sunlight there, you can see that the ratchet spanner has got an internal ring. That turns. Yep. So what you're gonna find is when I put this on the nut, it will turn in one direction, but when I try and turn it in the opposite direction, you can hear a click and you might even be able to see that the nut is not turning. Okay, and that is the basis of a ratchet. And what I'm going to do when I when I pull this seat belt apart is I'm going to show you the internal mechanism of what goes into making a ratchet because it is incredibly simple. And yet, what it achieves in this seat belt, and actually what it achieves in this spanner, is amazing. I, I can tell you, as as a as a guy working on cars, the difference in ease of use between these two products is like chalk and cheese. These, these non-ratcheting spanners are good in certain situations, but if you're in a tight spot and you're finding it hard to move, man, is this the one you want? You want the ratcheting one. Uh, all right, so, Caroline, for... Oh, sorry, okay, to start with... So, Caroline, you would have noticed when you're driving that sometimes when you get in the car and the car is, is really well seat, seated on uh, level ground, yep. the car's not moving, you can pull the seat belt out, right? Yep. Absolutely. But have you noticed when you're on a rough road and you pull hard, you can't, you can't pull it out? Yeah, like when you're full driving. Yeah. And you put your, if you 
if you haven't got your seatbelt on before you start on that gravel road, you get to here and you can't you lock can't, it or unlock it. You, you can't get it to, so, to uh, come to out. Release, yeah. You can get it to retract. Yeah. You can't get it to come out. Yeah. Right. And there's a very important reason for that. And we're, we're going to show you the magic is this little box on the, on the side here. When we open that up, you're going to find out why that experience that Caroline is talking about with four-wheel driving happens. And it doesn't just happen with four-wheel with four driving. Even if you're just in your car and you yank it hard, or if you're on, un, if you're on, a, um, on an incline, you may find you can't, you can't pull it out. You'll find you can put it back, but you can't pull it out. And of course, the purpose of that is in a crash, yeah. is to stop you flying through the windscreen. Right, so try and put yourself in the, in, the, in the shoes of the mechanical engineers that designed this. And think about traumatic situations in a car. For example, the car is rolling. It's in a really bad place. The car is now upside down. Do you really want the seatbelt to continue to pull out or do you only want it to be able to retract? And I think we can all agree, we all only want it to retract. So this device is specifically designed so that in situations where the, particularly when you're upside down, but even if you're on a funny angle, like you've, you've your car's been hit sideways and you've been bumped. Oh, it's, it's that's a, an Australian raven. That's a raven. We're going to, by, by the way, we've heard that you guys love hearing the bird sounds of Australia and we are going to um, shoot more outside and that was a raven. I hope we get some um, chitty chitties and um, uh, what's the other one we wanted? The magpies. Magpies. Anyway, that, that was a raven. Where was I? Okay. Uh, if you're hit on the side. If you're hit on the side, and so if you're T-boned, if your car's this way and you're T-boned, and your, your car then goes that way, it's off kilter, and you want the seatbelt to not let you fly to the other side of the car. You need to have the seatbelt lock up. So when I show you this mechanism, you're going to see that the mechanism in here is on a knife's edge, just about ready to ratchet at any point in time. It actually needs to be perfect before it will allow you to pull the seatbelt out. You may have also noticed when you've been on an aircraft that every single aircraft seatbelt you've ever used is manual. You've never had a retractable seatbelt in an aircraft. And the reason for that is that aircraft operate in three dimensions so much that they would never be able to make a system that would work. So you always have a lap strap that you have to manually tighten, right? Huh. Didn't you, know that. Yeah. I mean, I knew that's what they have. Yeah, but you'd never why. noticed it before. No, yeah, and that's that's that. when you see how this works, you'll understand that that has to be the case. Now, you, we've we've shown what a ratchet is, so we now know um, functionally what it does. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to deconstruct this because I'd like you to see inside it so that you can understand how it works. So, what's the best way to work out how something works? Well, the best way to figure out how something works, as my grandfather taught me, is to pull it apart. Pull it apart. Thank you very much, Caroline. <laughs> Let's pull this apart. Now, you'll be surprised how easy these actually are to pull apart. There are three plastic pins. So, if I just put this straight pick there and just punch that pin through, so you can see I've now got that, that one pin out. There's another pin over here, and there's a third pin here. And with those three pins out, just flew off the table. that's okay, that's all right. I can now remove the side uh, panel of this, and this reveals the simplicity and the beautiful nature of a ratchet. Now notice here that this cog has got these angled um, teeth. teeth, thank you, teeth on it. And notice I've got a ball bearing in a captured mechanism here and the mechanism has a a hinge here and can bend down and when it bends down this can move in either direction but when it's up it will only go one way and will not go backwards see how that will not that absolutely will not go backwards but if i push it down it will go backwards okay that is the simple explanation or the simple demonstration of how a ratchet works it is simply two teeth that are interacting that can move in one direction but have trouble oops 
have trouble moving in the other direction. And so that's amazing that that little bit of plastic is strong enough to hold a yeah. seat belt locked yeah, it, it's, in, with the force of a car crash. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's got a little bit of, there is some mechanical advantage um, to the, to the, to the setup, but essentially you're quite, yeah. you're quite right that the, these little bits of plastic have saved count, countless lives. I mean, this, this is an extraordinarily um, simple device and yet I have no idea how many tens, hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people this little device here has saved because that is what locks up your your um, seatbelt mm. when, when you have a radical accident. So I'll, I'll try and, well, actually, I can force it, actually. It's like that old so, saying, the most simple solution is often the best. Yeah, and, and, and good engineering is really simple. When you see well-engineered things, they're not overly complicated. Yeah. So if you look there, when I pull, and notice I've got this on a very unusual angle. Normally it would be in the car like that. I've got it on an unusual angle and it's locking up. Can you see how that's moving there? And that tooth is locked into that tooth there. So it will not let the seatbelt come out. Now I'm gonna force it just to make it easy for you. If I move that tooth down, I then will be able to pull the seatbelt out, okay? And that is the basis of that one-way ratchet is that tooth there needs to interact with that tooth there in a way that it's happy. And it's been engineered such that if it's perfectly vertical and horizontal and not shaking up and down, let's get that off the table, then it will, I'll see if I can, it might be a bit hard now that I've got it half deconstructed. You get, you get the idea anyway, that, that that tooth needs to be pulled down for that to go that way. But when it is up, it will quite happily go backwards, right? Mm. It'll go that way, no problem. It won't go that way, okay? That is the basis of how seatbelts um, lock up. That simple device there, I have no idea how many lives it saved, but man, I'm glad it exists. And I hope I've explained this in a way, um, or Caroline and I actually have explained this in a way that um, makes sense to you, coming from a background of, of no mechanical knowledge whatsoever. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this. So if you have, please hit like, hit subscribe, uh, leave a comment, tell me what com country you're from. Caroline, you've got anything? No, you're um, good? Be kind and make good choices. And yeah, and be kind and make good choices. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you later.